There's like, I don't know, it's very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? An anthropomorph anthrop anthropomorphic? Anthropomorphic? Where like an, an inanimate object takes on a, like it looks like a Muppet. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I feel like we, I feel like this is just missing a pair of googly eyes and it's gonna like help us tell a story. Hello, I'm Allison Roman. Welcome to Home Movies. Today we are making one of my favorite fish dishes of all time. Um, it uses salmon, which is a fish that I've only recently come around to loving, I'd say in like the past four to five years. I don't know if it's because I grew up in California eating a lot of it or if it was the way it was prepared, but I just never really got it. It, it was always kind of dry and flaky. It felt really fishy to me. I just, it was intensely flavored and not in a good way. And I just, it wasn't, it didn't speak to me. And it wasn't until I started cooking it very, very low, very, very slow in a lot of olive oil, sort of like you would like a chicken confit or slow roasted vegetables. The flavor and texture of salmon can be, it's like, better than any protein in all of the land or sea. And of course, what would a salmon recipe be without dill? Hello, old friend. <laughs> the other special thing about this salmon, in addition to the fact that it has a great cooking technique that is pretty foolproof, is the fact that it basically tastes like a bagel. Sometimes in like my creative process, I will be doing something and think that it's an original thought and then I'll be like, oh, it's a bagel. Like, I was like, oh yeah, I want like lemon and capers, okay. And then like, oh, you know what be really good? Like red onion. Oh, and then like, we should just like finish it with a ton of dill. Oh, I'm describing a bagel. That's what I'm doing. I'm eating a bagel. Regardless of how many people I'm feeding, I really like to get a large piece of fish because it cooks more evenly than small pieces and it makes for amazing leftovers. You can do anything with a perfectly cooked piece of salmon, I think. All right, this can be done in a baking, this can be done in a baking dish or a baking sheet. I'll use a baking sheet, why not? And this is about two pounds of salmon. And again, if I'm feeding six to eight people, this is an appropriate size fish. Or if I'm just cooking for myself, I will still cook a two pound piece of salmon because I like the way that the leftovers very seamlessly mix into everything else that I'm doing that week. I can use the salmon on salad, I can eat it by itself, I can eat it over grains. This is not a show about what kind of salmon you should be buying because I always say buy the salmon that smells the freshest, that is the freshest, that is the most sustainable that you can find. Not all farmed salmon is bad and not all wild salmon is good. Ethically, you have to talk to the person selling you the fish to say, how is this fish caught? How is this fish raised? Like what's the environmental footprint? Which also is a better chance to educate yourself. And hopefully that means that you're going to like you know, maybe you're going to a fish market you've never been to before and I don't know, talking to another human is awesome. This is a piece of fish. Um, it has the skin on, as you can see. We're not gonna eat the skin later, so I'm not worried about oiling this, but the skin of salmon has so much fat and oil in it anyway that it doesn't really stick and that's kind of the nice thing about it. But I like the skin on the bottom because it kind of is like a protective layer between the fish and the heat source. This is now the third, fourth time I'm slicing a lemon on the camera. On the camera, on, on the camera. camera. The intention is to eat these lemon slices at the end of this. So you do want to make sure that they're thin enough to eat enjoyably. And then the onion, I also like to slice in rings. And you don't have to use a mandolin here. I like it when they're a little bit thick. Some of these onions we're gonna eat raw and some of these onions are getting frizzled in the butter. So what I'll do, knowing that now, is the ones that I know that will be cooked. I'll slice a little bit thicker. We're gonna brown our butter. And my butter is soft. Yours does not have to be. It's just, it's hot in here. Um, and this also calls for olive oil. The butter won't brown if the olive oil is there. So I'm gonna brown the butter first, and then I'm gonna add the olive oil, the lemon, the onions, sizzle those all together, add the capers, and then everything gets poured over our beautiful piece of fish. I am using regular brined capers. If you have salt packed capers, that's cool too. You just wanna make sure that you are soaking them. The browning of the butter will take anywhere from three to five minutes. But see how it's like foamy and the bits on the bottom are now brown. And so to prevent this butter from turning to burned butter, I'm gonna add some olive oil, which is going to stop the cooking and prevent it from burning and also adding that lemon and the onion. And then I'm gonna add the lemon. It is gonna splatter a little bit because we're adding a liquid to a fat, but. And 
And these onions I will try to keep intact as much as possible. So I don't really want to disturb the skillet that much. I like the way that they look in these rings. We're frying the onions really. We're not trying to caramelize them or anything. I'm not going to touch this. I don't want to uh, make the onions fall apart. I'm not trying to disturb the lemon slices. I just want everything to kind of just like fry in the fat really quickly. And this is doing two things. This is softening the lemon and the onions and it's also infusing that butter and the fat with the flavor of lemon and onion. If you were a real caper head, you could use the entire jar. I wouldn't mind that at all, especially with a piece of salmon this large. And you know what? I am a real caper head, so I'm going to use the whole jar. So I've just drained them. I called for two tablespoons, but honestly, this is probably like three and a half. This is almost ready to get poured over. So I'm going to season this salt and pepper, just like you would any piece of protein. And right before the onions and the lemons are where I want them to be, I'm going to add the capers to give them a chance to kind of fry in that fat as well. Okay, maybe that's a lot of capers. I'm going to save these for chef's, chef's treat. Okay, this is basically my bagel order. I like, <laughs> I like it really well toasted. Regular cream cheese, never scallion, never any other type of cream cheese. Red onion, capers, squeeze of lemon, smoked salmon or gravlax and lots of dill if that's available. But like dill is not a thing you can order on a bagel necessarily, but it's if I were making a bagel at home, I would always do that. One time I went on a date with somebody and like this was our first, after our first date, we kind of got a little drunk and it was super fun. And the next day we were texting and I was like, I'm really hungover. And they sent me a bagel from a bodega. They like had like it, it delivered to my apartment. I was like, damn, that is a sweet move. And then I opened up the bagel and he had ordered sun-dried tomato goat cheese. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Like I can work with that, that like, but I was immediately like, that is not going to work for me. What kind of absolute sociopath orders somebody sun-dried tomato goat cheese as the default? Anyway, uh, I never heard from this person again, so it's fine. But like indicative of the cream cheese choice. Just just guess and be like, plain cream cheese. I don't know their order. Like who's like, you know what? I'm just gonna go with the most basic thing, sun-dried tomato goat cheese. Okay, this is ready. So you know this is ready because the onions are lightly fried. This is only going into a 325 oven for about 12 to 15 minutes. So nothing further will happen to these ingredients. Everything that needs to happen to these ingredients needs to happen in the skillet. This smells so crazy good to me. And when it comes out, we're gonna absolutely just demolish the salmon with dill. At this point, you can, you know, rearrange your onion slices and your lemon slices to suit your aesthetic needs. If you're like, I'm really happy with the way it looks straight out of the skillet, then that's great too. If you're insane like me and you wanna risk burning your fingers just so that the onion slices don't overlap, go with God. This is gonna go into our oven, 12 to 15 minutes. That's all, that's all it takes it would take a really long time at this temperature to feel like tough and rubbery. And so if you're unsure about your skills cooking fish, I feel like this will never ever steer you wrong. While that salmon is in the oven cooking, I'm gonna just toss the remaining thinly sliced onion. I'm very into the raw and the cooked onion flavors here. It's like if I get a burger at In-N-Out, I always get caramelized onions and raw onions. What's your In-N-Out order? In-N-Out order. Uh, I'm from California, by the way, so don't come for me telling me, oh, Shake Shack, oh, other burger places. No, In-N-Out is the best burger. Uh, the, oh, the fries aren't good. I didn't say the fries were good. I said it's a good burger. <laughs> Dan. Who are you fighting with? Dan. <laughs> I could sense the energy flying out of his brain. My In-N-Out order is a regular cheeseburger because the double double is too much meat for me. <laughs> I'm just like, it. <laughs> no special sauce, no ketchup mustard, caramelized onion, raw onion. That's the order. And lettuce, no yeah. tomato. No tomato, no ketchup, no sauce, everything else. Extra mustard and pickles. Can I say something? Yeah, you can the say whatever you want. borderline the roasted uh, red pepper goat cheese of in and <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> I did, and he was like, oh, I don't know, like, I just did, I didn't know what your order was. Maybe he did it so I would do something like this one day and tell the story. Like, mm -hmm. something so absurdly memorable that, like, I would think about him two years later. Well, guess what? I never think about you. <laughs> Except now. Except for now. So, another lemon has entered our lives. What a blessing. I'm going to only use half of it. If I had sesame seeds, which I don't, 
I would also be using them to top my bagel inspired salmon dish, but it's very good without sesame seeds too. Okay, my salmon's done. I can tell because I can smell it and because the timer went off. And we are gonna examine this salmon. We're gonna examine the salmon. <laughs> you can tell that before it's a lot more bright pink. It's sort of translucent and it's a lot richer of a color. And now the color has changed. It's a lot paler. It looks more like a Santa Fe salmon as opposed to like a Miami coral. Q Pantone chips above or whatever. This is the thickest part of the salmon here, and this is the thinnest part. So if you have people that are eating with you and they prefer their salmon on the well, more well done side, that's an option. And you can, you know, near the tail end and on the sides, the salmon is much thinner and therefore gonna be a little bit more well cooked, but it still should be very silky. Over here, you're gonna notice that it's gonna be closer to that former color, that Miami coral and still be like a little translucent, a little juicier. Mm. It's so, so silky and like tastes almost creamy. I don't know, it's it's, it's just crazy good. Um, and then to serve it, this is like pretty daunting and honestly could look a little bit better because it's just like, to me, just like what, like one big piece of fish. So what I like to do um, is I like to take big hunks of it and kind of played it like that. And that way it's also not intimidating for anybody looking to be like, how do I serve myself from this large piece of fish? This to me is best eaten on its own really. Like I don't feel the need to eat it with a side, but if you're the kind of person who needs like a starchy element, I feel like boiled crushed potatoes would be really good with this. A pot of fluffy rice would be awesome. Yeah, it's just like a very, very lovely preparation that will probably also remind you of a bagel. And like I said, all of these things are meant to be eaten. So like this charred little brown, brown buttered onion, lemon. This is so good. This would also work really nicely with cod or halibut if you're looking for something really expensive. Haddock would be good. What else can I say about this dish that hasn't already been said? I'm eating. <laughs> what do you want from me? I'm walking here, New York, bagels. <laughs> we truly this, it. Yeah, this bit has really gone the distance. <laughs>